In this video, I'm gonna show you four different ways that you can help prevent elbow problems whilst you're at home. So I'm gonna start this video by stressing that this is directed to those of you who do not currently have any elbow pain. Alternatively, you may have had previous history of elbow problems but do not currently have any. The reason why I stress this is because the four exercises within this video are very, very difficult. And for those of you who currently experience pain at the elbow, you may find these a little unbearable or too difficult to manage. If you're one of those people who currently have elbow issues, then do comment in the box below and I'm more than happy to create a separate video on how to treat existing elbow pain. So there is a common misconception that tennis players experience tennis elbow and golfers experience golfers elbow. However, in my experience, most of the tennis players that I've worked with who've had elbow issues tend to experience golfer's elbow, which is medially, as opposed to tennis elbow, which is laterally. Regardless of where the pain is that you're experiencing, these four exercises will help you prevent this issue from happening in the first place. The reason why these tendinitis or tendinosis problems occur in the first place is because these tissues within the joint are not experienced enough or strong enough to withstand the forces and the volume of those forces done repetitively over and over again during, for example, forehands, backhands, and serves repetitively for hundreds of reps day by day by day. There is a possibility it could be linked with muscular imbalances, but the main reason is because the tissues, the muscles, the tendons, etc., are not strong enough, they're not robust enough to withstand those forces repetitively. So therefore, this overuse repetitive strain injury is quite a common thing within the sport. The best way to prevent this happening in the first place is to make sure that those tissues are quite simply strong. The problem with most of the advice out there for helping prevent tennis and golfer's elbow, if you search through YouTube or Google, is that you'll find that the exercises are just not intense enough to stimulate adaptation. The exercises within this video are very difficult, and not only will they help you get stronger joints in order to prevent these injuries in the first place, but they'll also help you get stronger in other key areas of your body. The first exercise is gonna be a variation of a unilateral overhead elbow extension or tricep extension, but with a slight twist. So what we're gonna do is preferably hold onto a dumbbell. If you don't have a dumbbell at home, you can use a significant water bottle that when filled can maybe weigh about two or three kilos. And from here, with a neutral grip, you're going to actually flex at the wrist in order to try and create tension within the tissues that are associated with the elbow joint itself. You're then gonna support your upper arm overhead. To help minimize a lot of mobility issues at the shoulder, it's probably best that you sit on the floor and lean back against the edge of your sofa. You're then gonna reach overhead with that flexed wrist, and from there you're going to bend at the elbow, lowering down at a very slow and controlled pace. Try and squeeze the bicep at the very bottom to experience an even bigger stretch in the tricep, and then you're going to extend all whilst trying to keep that wrist flexed. That flexed wrist, again, will just give you extra tension within the elbow tricep area, and it will just make that exercise that little bit more challenging. <laughs> next exercise is a variation of a tricep kickback, whereas instead of maintaining a neutral wrist, in this instance we're going to alternate between a pronated and a supinated wrist, again placing stress and stimulus on those tissues associated with tennis elbow. <laughs> The third exercise is going to be a variation of a press-up or push-up. Instead of being on your hands as you would regularly or even your knuckles, from here you're actually going to position your wrists like so. So you're going to be forcing the press-up onto the back of your hand, which is going to create a lot of tension around the wrist. This one is not easy whatsoever and I do recommend that you start doing these press-ups on your knees first until your tissues around the wrist joint become more robust and strong. As with any push-up variation, make sure that as you lower yourself, you're drawing your shoulder blades together and then as you push up out of the bottom of the repetition, 
you allow your shoulder blades to open around your rib cage. This one is gonna be done very, very slowly and under control, so you might not manage that many repetitions. It's likely that you're gonna fail at the wrist before you fail at the elbow. So our fourth and last exercise is a regular press up. Here we're going to focus on a key area to help prevent joint problems. And that's gonna be isometrics. You're gonna set yourself up for a regular press up. Again, if you can't do these with your knees off the ground, then just quite simply put your knees on the ground to help reduce the intensity. You're gonna lower yourself down, again, drawing your shoulder blades together. And then when you get to 90 degrees at the elbow joint, you're quite simply gonna hold that position for as long as you can. Now, in my opinion, you need to be holding these for longer than 10 seconds. If you find that after 10 seconds, your position starts to change, then quite simply push up out of the repetition and start again. You want to do as many reps or hold it for as long as you can until you cannot hold that position anymore. thank you for watching. Place a comment in the box below if you have any specific questions or any videos you'd like me to cover. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button and if you want to see more, please hit the subscribe button as well as the bell icon next to that to get notified of our next release.